to action? Okay. So what we're going to be doing in this video is demonstrating for you a patient that has an endotracheal tube in. It's a size 8 endotracheal tube. And it's got a closed suction system attached to it, which is a size 14 French, which is the appropriate size uh, closed, suction, closed suction system to use for this patient. So I'll just kind of walk you through the equipment. We've got our patient again intubated. Attached to the patient's airway is the closed suction system right over here. The closed suction system is attached to some suction tubing, which goes to our suction unit, which is attached to our suction regulator. So one of the first things I should be doing with my patient is ensure that I've got my suction set up appropriately. So I'm gonna have it set to regulate, which I've got. I'm gonna make sure that I turn my gauge here, or my uh, knob here, until the gauge reads with the suction system closed off. 120, because this is an adult male, and we're going to suction them out with minus 120 millimeters of mercury suction pressure. So we've got that set up. The next thing we have to do is make sure that it is in fact on and working. So I'm going to disconnect it, and I have suction. I can feel it, I can hear it. So we'll have that connected to our closed suction system. We're going to have our suction locked until we need to use it, so it's in the lock position right now. The next thing I'm going to make sure is that I've got my patient running on 100% oxygen, which they should have been, since I'm ventilating them. Now, ideally, you'd have maybe a second person helping out to do this, but for this video, I don't have anybody else available to uh, help out, so I'm going to simulate as if I'm doing it by myself. So we're ventilating our patient. Now, another thing that you want to make sure that you've done before you suction your patient out, whether it's open suction or closed suction, is assess your patient to determine if they in fact need to be suctioned. So how you do that is you listen to their chest with your stethoscope equal bilateral. You could also observe your patient's endotracheal tube to see if there's in fact secretions coming out. And just take a look at your patient, see if they need to be suctioned. So there's a few things you can do from that perspective. So before you suction your patient out, you want to make sure that in fact you do have your personal protective equipment on. So you'd have your goggles, your gloves, a gown if you need a bit, safety glasses, um, your goggles, uh, mask possibly, anything that is required for this particular person's level of isolation. Now with the bagger, we've got the tapered flex tube that comes with the suction system. We've got the bagger with the diverter on it, as well as peep set to roughly 5 centimeters of water pressure. And we're kind of leaving this patient at a rate of roughly about 12 to 14 breaths per minute. Now when it comes time to suction your patient, Make sure that you advance the catheter in such a fashion that it goes down into your patient's trachea. You can hit the obstruction and you hit some sort of resistance. Stop, pull back a centimeter, then apply suction for roughly 10 to 15 seconds. Always hyperoxygenate your patient for at least two minutes prior to suctioning them out on 100% oxygen. So you can do that with your ventilator, or in this particular case, where I have the bagger hooked up to the patient's airway, I'm providing 100% oxygen to the patient. Always tell your patient what you're going to do as well. So, sir, I'm going to stick the suction catheter down the plastic tube inside your trachea and remove all the secretions for you. So, one big breath. Another big breath. I'm going to turn my suction on, or the little safety cap on. I'm going to advance while stabilizing the tube, the suction catheter. Apply it, hit the restriction, pull back, apply suction. Make sure the catheter is removed all the way out of the endotracheal tube. Resume ventilation. I noted that I removed from the secre secretions from the patient moderate amounts of yellow to white secretion. Let the patient recover. Check the vital signs to make sure the vital signs were what they were before suction the patient out. And then go back and reassess your patient. So you take your stethoscope out, place it in your ears, and while you ventilated your patient, you listen. See if they need to be suctioned again. And it seems like my patient needs to be suctioned, so I'm going to suction them out one more time. So one to, minute, one to two minutes have passed since the last suctioning. Look at the vital signs on the monitor. The vital signs are in fact normal. 
now we'll suction the patient out again. So stabilize the tube, grab the plastic sheathing, force the catheter in. Hit the restriction, pull back, apply suction. Suction out your patient. Resume ventilation. Check to make sure their vital signs stabilize. Listen to their chest. At this point in time, my patient's already been suctioned out twice. All the secretions removed. We've noted the amount of secretions that they uh, have removed from them. The color. Restored them back to the ventilation status. We continue, continue in this fashion until uh, the patient was established on a mechanical ventilator or they were taken down to transport or whatever the resolution for the patient actually was. So I'm going to assume somebody is ventilating my patient for me right now. And I want to show you what to do or how to clean out the suction catheter once you've done suction the patient out with the closed suction system. So what we do is we take what's called a pinky or some normal saline like this. Crack it open. Make sure your suction's on, and it still is. Make sure your catheter, the ports or the eyelets in the suction catheter are right where the fluid from the pinky would be aspirated into the system. Take your pinky, attach it to the port like so, and then as you squeeze the pinky, apply suction for a short period of time to clean the catheter out. So I'm going to apply some suction, squeeze the pinky, and I'm suctioning all that stuff out, cleaning the catheter. Once that's done, I'm going to remove the pinky, close off that port, and take my suction, shut it off so it's in the lock position. Now my patient can be uh, treated, can be ventilated, can be oxygenated, and I don't have to worry about suction being applied to the patient accidentally. And if the hospital pro protocol is to shut the suction off here at the gauge, you can suction it, su you can, sorry, shut it off there as well. And that's pretty well how you suction out the patient. There's something else I want to tell you as well, but I can't really remember what it was at this point in time. Oh, the other, one other thing I want to show you is how to advance the catheter. All right, so I'm going to shut the oxygen off for the patient and detach the bagger so you have a better chance of seeing this. But what you can do is an easy way, or an easier way to advance the catheter. Cliff, if you can get a close-up of this. Now when you advance the catheter into the patient with a closed suction system, one way that you can avoid the bulking up of the actual sheath that the catheter is in between your fingers and the endotracheal tube is to take the catheter itself and the bag and push the catheter in and then pull back on the bag, grip the catheter again with your fingers, advance the catheter, pull back with the bag, and repeat this process until you've advanced the catheter into the patient. And you'll note all the bulking up to the sheath is behind my fingers here, and not between my fingers and the endotracheal tube. And you can advance the catheter very, very quickly. Once you've done that, pull back, apply your suction, and remove the catheter from the patient's endotracheal tube, being sure not to kink it off over here, over at the patient end. So I'll do it one more time. I've been holding onto the bag and the catheter. Advance, pull back on the bag, advance, pull back on the bag. And the bag bunches up between the finger, or my fingers, and the gauge. Pull back, and apply suction. One more time. And apply suction. Yeah, that's cool suctioning. Clean up your mess, take off your dirty attire, go chart what you did, what you found, how your patient reacted to it, and how you left your patient after you're done suctioning. And make sure your patient was on the exact same parameters after suctioning as they were before they were suctioned out. That's it.